uh, upset him. You could see it in his demeanor. Ultimately, I gave him a scenario. I said, you know, sir, the way you're treating me, I said, how would you like it if I were to treat you that way? And I, I said, just for example, you come to my jurisdiction. I don't have probable cause. I don't have reasonable suspicion. There's nothing suspicious about you, but I just pull you over and say, I stopped you because you're suspicious. Mm -hmm. And you asked me, well, what's suspicious about me? And I went through this whole scenario, and I said, you wouldn't appreciate that very much, would you? And he said, I'm paid to be suspicious. I said, really? You're paid to be suspicious of law enforcement officers? I said, I will remember that the next time I pull over a TSA agent, that they are paid to be suspicious of me, a cop. And well, in other words, I was pointing out the idiosyncrasy of what he was saying. They're, they're paid to treat everyone as if we are guilty. They're trained to treat us all as terrorists, even though... As we just reported, they allowed the Muslim Brotherhood to get a VIP pass when they came here. So you're, you're Al-Qaeda, you're suspicious just because you're an American. But, but go ahead, tell us what happened then after uh, you, did anything happen or we, at that point you were allowed to get onto the plane? Well, he, he starts closing distance on me, becoming increasingly more hostile, making statements that you don't cop an attitude with me, do you understand? So oh. he's speaking to the chief of police as though I am I'm a convicted felon on the street who, who is in the process of committing some crime. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, the aviation police sort of got between us and uh, allowed us to be on our way. And we did. We got uh, we'd stopped off at our at our, at our gate. We got a, uh, a jug of orange juice. Was was just getting some refreshments. And a person in plain clothes walks up and takes our picture and walks off. Oh, and I really? Thought, that is that is just so odd. So we get on our plane. I had no carry on. Once we land, we get our baggage. My baggage had been searched. Huh. They turned on my laptop computer, attempted to access my laptop computer. Wow. And, you know, I, I, I thought that was suspicious. And so we go to this thing. I didn't know what I was getting into when I went to this Constitutional Sheriff's and Peace Officers Association meeting. I knew very little about it. But once I got there, my eyes were opened. I saw a group of men and women, law enforcement, decorated law enforcement officers from all over the country, painstakingly constructing documents to help preserve our American way of life. Mm -hmm. Men, grown men, with tears rolling down their face, grieving over what was happening to our country. And I realized I'm onto something here. This is bigger than all of us. This is about our God-given rights. And so I signed on. I got on board wholeheartedly. The moment I got on the ground and turned on my, my cell phone, my department-issued cell phone, I had a message from the Sandoval County Sheriff's Department. I made contact with Lieutenant Benelli, who stated that my law enforcement credentials with the Sheriff's Department were being revoked. So I'm cross-commissioned. I have mm -hmm. dual authority. Mm -hmm. So that dual authority was being revoked by the Sheriff, and uh, it was really no reason as to why. Now, if I didn't already state this, I'm, I'm going to restate it if I did. While in the airport in Albuquerque, and, and having this confrontation with this unethical, unconstitutional TSA agent, he made the statement to me, I know people in your district, and I'm going to make some phone calls. Well, he, he lived up to his word. He contacted Sheriff Doug Wood of the Sandoval County Sheriff's Department, made his allegations. Now, the key thing to remember is uh, he's not Sandoval County has nothing to do with Bernalillo County, which is where the airport is housed. So this, this he had no jurisdiction over this issue. It was unethical for a lot of reasons, but... Sheriff Wood then made a complaint to my agency, and I was called in on my day off, placed on administrative leave, ordered to collect all handguns, badges, commission cards, uniforms, equipment from my officers, and then to report for a town hall meeting tonight at 6 o'clock. Now we're going to have him at the bottom of the hour with an update at what happened at that town hall meeting. But this is really amazing. This is a man of integrity who just one week, less than a week earlier, Prior to this happening, he had received a meritorious commendation from the mayor. Now, he was fired by a combination of the mayor and the sheriff of the county where he is a police chief. And he told me when I spoke to him last night that in this small town, there was only about 150 people. 125 of them had signed a petition to keep him. So we're going to find out what happened about that. But I want you to pay attention to what was in the article and what he said, that he was approached by a federal agent who told him that he was a person of interest. And when he was fired, the sheriff of Sandoval County said that he was being, his entire 
Police Department was being disbanded because of political affiliations. And we're going to talk about what those dangerous political affiliations are right after the break. We're going to have an excerpt from our interview with Sheriff Mack over this very issue. Stay tuned. You can eliminate inflammation and pain. You can eliminate constipation or irritable bowels. You can flatten your tummy without exercises, and you can make your complexion clearer and more youthful. You can feel good from the inside out. Find out that as far back as 1749, what was able to reverse one man's death sentence and open up 160 spas to dispense this life-giving food. Call 866-844-1047. That's 866-844-1047. Is the Second Amendment your line in the sand? Is the United States Constitution important to you? Are you worried about gun confiscation? You need to join us for free at gunconfiscation.com. At gunconfiscation.com, you will meet like-minded patriots, get the latest Second Amendment news, and find anything you need to prepare for gun confiscation. Visit gunconfiscation.com today. That's gunconfiscation.com. Which side are you on? In the last 50 years, iodine has been phased out of our staple foods and replaced with the halogen bromine, a practice now banned in nations around the world. Guess what else is in the halogen family? Fluoride. Ladies and gentlemen, Alex Jones here. In 1924, the federal government did the right thing and encouraged salt producers to add iodine. It's the good halogen on the periodic table. And the results are on record, reports documented, a 15-point IQ increase in areas that had previously been deficient in iodine. Bottom line, iodine is important. Unbound, clean, in a glycerin base. Nascent iodine was the answer for myself and my family. You will find Survival Shield nascent iodine exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com. InfoWars Life Survival Shield nascent iodine isn't just for emergencies. I take it every day. That's InfoWarsLife.com or call toll free 888-253-3139. Ladies and gentlemen, America is more dangerous than ever with 9 million property crimes last year. Crimes are happening every day. Be proactive and protect your home and family. Simply Safe Home Security System helps guard against criminals, thugs, and thieves. Listen, Simply Safe is the absolute best alarm system and company in America today. Here's why. We offer a 60-day money-back guarantee. It's affordable, no contracts to sign, and is built with the latest wireless technology. Simply Safe protects the ones you love the most, even if a criminal cuts your power and phone lines. When you order today, you'll receive a 10% discount along with a free keychain remote. Don't wait. This offer is only valid through January 31st. Take advantage of this special discount offer at GetSimplySafe.com. That's GetSimplySafe.com. Protect your home and family now at GetSimplySafe.com. We all know that Berkey Water Purification Systems are the most trusted name in water filtration. As an authorized Berkey dealer for over six years and serving thousands of satisfied customers, the Berkey Guy offers amazing specials for Berkey Water Filtration Systems. The Berkey Light Systems include a set of self-sterilizing and recleanable black purification elements that purify water by removing chlorine, pathogenic bacteria, cysts and parasites to non-detectable levels and remove harmful chemicals such as herbicides and pesticides. Order the Berkey Light System System today complete with two black Berkey elements for only $231 and the Berkey guy will ship your order free of charge. With the purchase of a Berkey light, the Berkey guy is also offering a set of fluoride and arsenic filters for only $39.99. That's over 30% off the retail price. Call the Berkey guy at 1-877-886-3653. That's 1-877-886-3653 or order online at goberkey.com. That's goberkey.com today. Back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, and we were just playing a clip from our interview last night with Police Chief Harger. Now, he's the New Mexico police chief who was suspended, is actually the correct uh, term, he's placed on leave, but his entire police force was disbanded. Now, there was a meeting last night to see whether his employment would be continued and what the conditions of that are going to be. We're going to have him at the bottom of the hour live to give us an update. I might have said that he was fired earlier. That's not true. He was not fired. He was placed on leave. But his entire police department 
was disbanded. They had to turn in their badges, turn in their guns. And understand how dangerous this is. This is politically motivated. The reason that the sheriff who took this action gave was he had to disband his entire police department due to his, quote, political affiliations. He was approached at the airport by a man identifying himself as a federal agent and said that he was a person of interest. What had he done? Well, he was on his way to a constitutional sheriff's and peace officers association meeting. These are law enforcement officers who swear to uphold the Constitution, unlike the people that we met in San Antonio who went down there for the open carry rally. We talked to the San Antonio police chief and others with him. They would not verify that they would refuse an order to confiscate guns if given that order. They would not say that they were going to obey the Constitution that they swore to take an oath to. These peace officers and sheriffs would. It's a very important scenario. It is not a hypothetical scenario, as he said. Well, of course, all scenarios are hypothetical, but whether you're going to obey the Constitution or not is not a hypothetical. It's fundamental. We talked to Sheriff Mack last night. Let's hear what he had to say about this specific incident in New Mexico. The TSA getting hold of a sheriff, a buddy, going behind his back, a back room, back door deal, firing a good, honest, Christian, constitutional chief of police who was a, the only thing he did wrong during the time he left town to the time he got back was to attend a constitutional convention with the CSPOA. And this is the reason we had this meeting was one, to establish a resolution to put the federal government on notice that they're not going to do anything like this in our areas. Mm -hmm. We now have a resolution. You've got to post this on InfoWars.com. We, we have eight things that these sheriffs, we have 41 public officials, now 42, and it's counting. We get more every day. But after this conference, the sheriffs and chiefs of police and peace officers and county commissioners and everybody who attended this, there's about 75 people, all agreed that this was the right thing to do, that we were going to put the IRS on notice, we're going to put the federal government on notice, that they're not going to be able to commit crimes in our jurisdictions anymore. Yes. And now we get this blowback and this, this happening to one of our officers. We've been praying and praying and fighting and praying and fighting and praying so that these sheriffs and this kind of chief of police would stand for principles of freedom, stand for their oath of office. We now have this happening. It's starting, and this is a peaceful res revolution. It's a peaceful solution, and we've got to have everybody on board, or we're not going to make it. Now, Sheriff Mack said, this is a peaceful revolution. It is something that you can be a part of. You can support this action, just as people supported the sheriff in Florida who was fired because uh, he would not enforce unconstitutional gun regulations on someone there. He was reinstated. We have to fight this. We have to fight this collectively. And this is something that Alex has been saying for a long time, that the police are not going to be immune from these kind of power tripping illegal actions that we see the TSA and other federal agencies doing. This is something that is going to be a pervasive systemic corruption and oppression. And we're starting to see this now. If they can disband whether it's because they had identified that he's going to this convention or whether it's because he said at one point, I'm going to stand on my First Amendment and my Fourth Amendment rights. That's all I'm going to give you. Whether that annoyed them and they disbanded the police department, this is the kind of power they should not have. We look at this situation with the Super Bowl. They're going to have to go two hours early in Arctic weather to go through security. I mean, people that are going to the Super Bowl, like Jakari Jackson and Josh, they're going to be sitting out there in this Arctic weather for six and a half hours just because of, well, two hours of it is going to be because of these useless procedures. Any security expert will tell you that what they're doing is creating a very dangerous situation by bunching everybody up outside of a security zone. And even if it were effective, are you willing to give up your freedom and your liberty, your God-given rights for the promise of that security? There is no trade-off. You cannot trade it off. You're either free or you're a slave. You're not partially free. Remember that what they call a maximum security area is a prison. And if they can't stop drug abuse, if they can't stop drugs in federal prisons, because we have a lot of people who are dying in federal prisons of drug overdoses every year. If they can't stop it inside of a prison, they can't stop drugs inside of a prison. And they cannot stop terrorist attacks by these kind of 
nonsensical, oppressive measures. Now, stay tuned. We're going to be talking to this police chief. We're going to get an update on what happened. So stay tuned. It's going to be live in just a couple of seconds. We're going to find out whether they fired him or what his current status is. Stay tuned. We're on the march.